Hi guys, it's Tom from CoaJoint here. This video is going to be on creating a lightning style effect in Unity. So let's take a look at what we're going to be creating. Uh, I'm using this as a lightning spell in a fantasy game or a demo. Um, so this is what I need it for, but it could be used to create a chain lightning effect as I'll explain later on. Um, so it's using line renderers. Now I know that people give the line renderers a lot of stick, but for this purposes, well for my purposes anyway, it was fine. Um, if you want to, if there's a problem with instantiating a lot of line renderers uh, on mobile, then you might want to look at uh, Eric's uh, vector line drawing solution, which he talks, uh, which you should be able to search for. But um, I don't need to worry about that, so it's been fine for me. Anyway, so into the details. So let's just take a look at one of these lightning rods first of all. And as you can see, it's it's pretty ugly. Um, this is one of the main problems with line renderers; they don't render them particularly well, and also you get this sort of twisting. Uh, which is so that they can, I don't know, organize themselves or orient themselves even. Um, but in the inspector here, you see the line renderer, and um, it's fairly simple. The one thing you want to probably do first of all is turn off using world space, uh, especially if you want to change the transform uh, in, uh, in the editor or stuff like that, uh, because it won't allow you if you have world space on, so you probably want to tick that off. Um, the positions here tell you uh, the start and end points of these line segments here. Now, it says here that there's 12 segments, but you notice that there's only four segments here, and that's because I've initialized a lot of these uh, end and start points to, uh, to, to the end point here, the at 8, in, uh, in the local coordinates of the line renderer. So that's the reason why they're not showing up, but this is how you alter them here. You, uh, there you go, you can see that's uh, another end point there. Uh, that's how you can alter them in the inspector, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a script to change the positions of them. And the way that this actually works is that we instantiate uh, a new lightning uh, sort of prefab, and then we randomize these endpoints to get um, to get a lightning rod. I'll go over what the code does in a sec. So you can see here, this is 12 line segments, and uh, we're just sort of randomizing these positions in local space um, to create a lightning rod. Oh, there's one thing I didn't explain as well, is how I actually get the it looking like a lightning rod. That's pretty simplistic. Cool. So the way that I got it looking like a lightning rod is I set the start and end width to 0.15, so it's nice and thin. And this took a little bit of fiddling around, but I'm using a additive particle shader here, um, and the texture that I'm actually using has got a, a sort of a very uh, strong white bar in the middle, and then I've used the blur effect in GIMP to sort of get this sort of gradient effect. Um, the, in Unity, the black is treated like an alpha, so you don't have to worry about that. It, it uh, the reason why I've put a black back background anyway is so it's easier to tell sort of how the color is falling off. And then I just use this uh, the the tint color here to change the color to make it look a bit more like sort of uh, rods of lightning or whatever it would be called. I don't quite know. Um, now in the actual script itself, um, I get a reference to the line renderer using get component. And then I set the number of vertices uh, to using number of segments, which I've set to 12. And then all I'm doing here is I, I step along uh, in uh, equal length intervals along the length of the line renderer. So here it goes from 0 to 8. And that's what I've set it to. Um, where's that? So, yep, max Z. And then I split that into equal intervals, and then I'm just randomly generating uh, the X and Y coordinates along that as I step along the X. Uh, the z-axis, sorry, so there we go. So it would be like that. If you can see that with my mouse, you might not be able to see that. Anyway, so you can see here, so what happens here, that's one point there, and then, so that's the z-point, and then I randomly generate x and y uh, within a certain range here, which is 0.15, which is quite small. Um, but that's how I, I do that. Now, when I'm actually instantiating lots of uh, lightning rods, we want them to die out because that's how sort of that, that's how uh, if you look at a Tesla coil or something like that, um, it's sort of jumping about all over the over the place. So to simulate that in the update, I'm getting the um, I'm setting the color of the line renderer, or both the colors here. So you see there's a start and end color, and you can control the alpha here. So you can see it disappears in the game view there. Uh, start. So if we set both the alpha of both of those colors to zero, it will mean that the lightning rod disappears. So all I'm doing is that I'm uh, as time continues, I decrease the value of the alpha channel for both of those colors, and then when the alpha channel is is less than zero, um, I just destroy it. So let's just take a look at that. It will destroy itself really quickly. So 
Um, keep your eyes peeled. And it's gone. So very quickly gets rid of itself. But we can use that sort of uh, disappearing act to, um, to create lots of quite interesting lightning rods. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a script, which I've put on an invisible cube here, um, to sort of instantiate lots of lightning rods. And all this script does is, but every frame basically I'm instantiating three lightning prefabs. So I've got a prefab here uh, of this lightning rod. So if I play this now, hopefully it will show you. So yeah, we've got lots and lots of uh, lightning rods being instantiated here. Um, as you can see in the inspector, but it doesn't really look like lightning at the moment. I mean, if I, or sort of a sort of lightning spell effect, if I increase this a bit, it will be a bit better, uh, which is the the randomness in the position, or the total randomness. And you see, it does look a bit too much. That's probably a bit over the top there. But you can see it's, it's starting to get a bit more lightning-like. It could be used in a spell um, or something like that in a game. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to separate separate them out a little bit so it will be almost like a an arc, so an arc of a lightning type spell. So what I did is to uh, ensure that each lightning rod goes through um, a point in a circle. So if you can imagine here, in in sort of world space, in sort of in the uh, the y x plane here, if you imagine a circle, I for each lightning rod. I randomly pick up a, a point in the circle, and then I say, "Okay, using a sort of parabolic arc, uh, we I want you that lightning rod to go through that midpoint." And the way that I do this is I won't go into too many details, but uh, I've used the quadratic formula to, to sort of simulate that parabolic arc, and then the y co coordinate of that random point in the circle is the height uh, for the y direction, and then or h in this case, and then I do the same thing for the x coordinate of that random point to generate a parabolic arc in both the uh, y and x directions, I hope that makes sense, and then combined together they produce a parabolic arc in sort of 3D space. And uh, to get these, these coefficients a, b and c, uh, you just solve uh, simultaneous equations, which are very simple to do. Uh, you just bung in the points that you know um, where the, the value is going to be zero. So at the start and end point, you know that they're zeroed out, the height is zeroed out, so that's going to be zero, and the, uh, the x coordinate is zeroed out as well. And then uh, also you know that the where it's going to be at the midpoint in the in the arc, so you know it's going to be a certain distance up or along in the x direction. Uh, sorry if that if I went over those details too quickly, but hopefully if uh, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, um, that will make sense to you what I'm saying if you take a look. So let's just uncomment this code, and uh, we go back to what we saw before, which is uh, so this is what it's doing here. So we generate a random point. It's it's actually not in a circle. It's in a in a square region here. I, but you know I didn't I didn't want to really be bothered about that. Um, so that's that's in a square region. We generate a point, which is the mid, which is going to be a point which each lightning rod is going to go through. And then I use those quadratic formulas here um, to to calculate uh, at each interval. So that z interval that we were talking about before, the jumps along the the length of the lightning rod. Um, we generate the x and y points, and then to make it a bit more interesting, we add some randomness to it. So I actually just turn the randomness off, and you'll see these uh, these parabolic arcs. So there, you can see um, what I'm talking about, that they're sort of going around in uh, randomly generated parabolic arcs. And then if we turn the randomness up a bit, then we get the effect that I showed you at the beginning of the video. To create the lightning, sort of chain lightning effect, um, I think that the best way to go about something like that is that uh, if you see, if you can see these points here, we know what that position is in space. So all we have to do is we can instantiate a, a new lightning prefab at that position there, and then we can randomly orient its local axes. You can instantiate that and then make it shorter as well, and then you can have the same thing, and maybe randomly generate uh, more chain lightning off that as well, so you can get a lightning effect, which will be kind of cool. But um, for my purposes, uh, it, it was unnecessary. Um, so I hope this has been interesting to everyone. Um, I've got another video coming soon, so check out that. If you enjoy the video, make sure you check out my other videos. And uh, thanks very much, and looking forward to seeing everyone soon. Cheers.